For more on the use of robots in the military, we have two people joining us with differing opinions. With us live from New York City is Mike Lyons, a senior fellow with the Truman National Security Project, and from Beijing, Professor Noel Sharkey, an expert on robotics. Gentlemen, thank you so much for being there. Uh, Noel, let's start with you in Beijing. There are more drones in the world than ever before, and we just saw that story about these military-type robots, these autonomous robots, and it appears we're beyond drones now. Well, we're, we're moving beyond drones. Yes, there is massive proliferation throughout the world. Uh, it's, it's really big business. There's a lot of billions of bucks to be earned. And uh, so companies are working very fast. And there's a sort of arms race developing between different nation states. I've tracked 77 countries now that have drones or are developing them themselves. But now we're going to move beyond these because it's new bells and whistles to sell more. And we're moving to the stage of autonomous drones, like the X-47B and the Mantis you've mentioned in your, in your footage. And this is very, very concerning. It will change the nature of warfare, I believe. And the, the X-47B is being specifically designed for use in the Pacific. It's got a 2,000 mile range. And so it, because the uh, Chinese now have got weapons that can sink uh, American aircraft carriers for the first time, so they need to keep further away in the 2,000 mile range, and it can uh, automatically refuel in the air. It's a pretty uh, scary time. It, it looked pretty scary, some of the video we saw. Mike, I'd like to bring you in on this and your take. Uh, as Asuray mentioned, uh, it's more palatable to see these drones take place in countries where we don't want to see humans being killed, but we still do see humans being killed. Yeah, unfortunately, that is collateral damage is part of the process. But uh, the American president would say that drone use right now is legal. It's it's highly effective. It uh, and it also saves lives. And uh, as uh, the United States prepares to kind of chase down terrorists in these places that have hid away in countries in countries that can no longer catch them, uh, they've used this technology. There's no question that the drone, the, the aerial unmanned vehicle uh, armed with a rocket, has changed uh, warfare. It's one of those things like the crossbow before the machine gun. Uh, and the airplane has changed the way uh, nations will eventually fight their wars. Well, let's talk about that because, you know, seeing this video of these drones and these robots, it looks like something out of a movie. Do you think we'll see a day where we see drones and robots fighting one another uh, from various countries? I think that's very far in the future, if that at all. I mean, you still have the human element that exists. I, I think that uh, there'll be trees that could exist between countries there because, to, to the point, there could be some kind of proliferation uh, and an arms race to, to do this. Uh, you've got to get other countries involved, I think, first and foremost. Um, but to get to that level, I think, uh, is a pretty extreme, and I think we're well, very far away from that spot. Noel, let's bring you back in from Beijing. What is your biggest concern uh, about the use of drones and robots? Well, at, at present, it's, it's, it's the autonomous ones that I don't like. That's weapons that once launched can engage targets, select and engage targets without further human supervision. But your other speaker said that President Obama says it's quite legal, the use of drones. And of course, that's very questionable because they're attacking in, in countries that the United States is not at war with. And recently, even in Libya, it seems that the war powers resolution in the United States is not being used in force. And it might be that uh, this is not a war and this is human rights issues. And so you can't have collateral damage of humans if that's the case. And so innocent people are being murdered, essentially. But setting that aside for a moment, um, the use of autonomous drones, I think, will develop very, very quickly. Um, I don't think it will be a long time. I could make you a killer, a killer autonomous robot within two weeks if I wanted to, if I wasn't m concerned about the morality of it. The United States is concerned not to kill a lot of civilians, of course. But the problem with these weapons is that they can't, uh, computer systems cannot discriminate their targets. They can't tell the difference between a combatant and a civilian. And I think by 2020, at the very latest, latest, these systems will be deployed. They don't know how to be proportionate, how to apply proportionate force. And as you mentioned earlier, there's a bloodless war here on one side, and that side will be the high-tech countries, but not for terribly long, because many countries will have them. As soon as these are developed, they're very hard to think of the ideas, they're very hard to develop them, but once they've been developed, 
they're not so difficult to copy. I know that China are developing the Anjun, the hidden sword, I can't speak Chinese unfortunately, um, and that's an air-to-air -air combat fully autonomous uh, aircraft. I don't know how far they're getting along with it. The Russians are developing the SCAT, the Israelis well, have no, a ground robot called the Guardian. No, let me, is, let me get uh, Mike autonomous. to weigh so in on this as well. Because here. Let me get Mike to weigh in on, in on this as well, because in the end, uh, with, regardless of an autonomous robot, humans still have to be behind it. Humans still have to be behind the programming and the technology, wouldn't you say? Mike, let me get your yeah, thoughts. To yeah, it. that's so right. It's not there, there are very few fire and forget weapons in the current inventory right now. In fact, most of them are really the surface to air missiles, which are technology back from the 1950s and 60s that are heat seeking in their in regard. And they're, again, indiscriminate to who they hit. It's point and click. Uh, but most weapon platforms are have human involvement all the way. And in particular, the drone program that the United States has, uh, it, it, they're clear with regard to eyes on those targets. And, and it's, uh, they're going through painstaking processes to make sure uh, that the target is going to have the least amount of collateral damage as possible. Um, Noel, we have 10 seconds left. I'd like you to have the last word. Well, I, I think I wish, wish that what Mike was saying was absolutely true, and I fear it isn't. I think we need a new national treaty to prohibit these dangerous weapons before they get out of hand. All right, Noel Sharkey from Beijing, Mike Lyons from New York City. Thank you both gentlemen for being with us this evening.